Almighty God, you have made this season holy by giving us your Son born this night. May his light shine within our hearts even more brightly than it ever has before. Help us this night to hear your word, to celebrate your everlasting gift of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. This has been a busy Christmas season. We have been running and running and running. We have shopped until we almost dropped. We have attended office get-togethers, Sunday school parties. In all this running around, if we're not careful, we just might miss it. So tonight, let us stop and breathe. Together, let us ponder what it is we are celebrating this night. If we could pause long enough to do that, I trust that the enormity of it all would grab us and cause our hearts to sing. This Christmas Eve, as Jesus is almost here, we have gathered in this sacred space to celebrate together, to marvel together at the miracle of God coming to us as a human being, just as much a human being as the person sitting next to you tonight. That's the part of all this that blows my mind. Maybe I've heard the story too many times that all the other stuff has become rather, well, believable. An angel visits Mary and says, you will give birth to a son. Even though she's not married, she will bear the Savior of the universe. Guess that makes sense. And then when she tells Joseph, he is initially skeptical. But then an angel visits him too, and he signs on to the plan. Okay, I can buy that. The couple takes a long journey to Bethlehem for the census, and they don't find any room at the inn. I've tried to travel on Christmas Eve before, so I believe that too. They find a spot in an animal stable, and Mary gives birth there. But the thing I find so amazing is that when God wanted to come to earth, he came as someone like me, like you, a tiny, fragile baby. God became a human being. Whenever I meditate upon this story, that part stops me cold. Jesus, Son of God, eternally present even at the beginning of time, creator and yet savior of the universe, came to earth in human flesh. There's something rather remarkable about a God you can see. One of Jesus' great gifts is that when we look at him, we see God's face. Which means, of course, that God looks like you. God looks like me. God looks like every human being on this earth. 
And there's something rather remarkable about a God you can touch. The hymn writer Tom Troger puts it this way, this child shall be Emmanuel, not God upon the throne, but God with us, Emmanuel, as close as blood and bone. It was about 10 years ago, I was called to the hospital in the North Carolina town where I was pastor. It was almost bedtime, one of the nurses called me, is this Reverend Glaze? Yes ma'am, it is, how may I help you? Well, I have a patient here who is near death could come at any minute. The family has asked for last rites to be administered. We can't find Father Tom. Can you come quickly? Oh boy. (laughs) I'm no Catholic priest. Haven't done last rites in my life. I'm not even sure what all is involved. And then I remembered what Professor Dan Bagby told me back in seminary. There will be an occasion, he said, whereby you are called upon to minister, but for which you feel inadequate and unprepared. Still, you must go. I recalled Professor Bagby's teaching. I changed my clothes and I went to the hospital. I met there in the hospital bed an attractive woman, a young mother who had cancer. I prayed that here at the end, God would be gracious and merciful. I prayed for her children and her husband gathered there in the room. I prayed that they would be cared for. And I prayed for her to join that great communion of saints who live with God eternally. I held her hand, made the sign of the cross on her forehead, and I prayed for her soul. She died in my hands. I was reflecting upon that experience a few days later and I came to realize what a holy moment that was. But if I'm honest, what made it holy was not the prayers that I prayed, the scripture that I read, What made it holy was that this young woman, as she was walking through the valley of the shadow of death, she asked me to stand by her and to touch her. The incarnation, brothers and sisters, The enfleshment of God is a way that we can say that we believe in a God that you can touch, a God that you can see, a God that holds on to you. Here's what I believe. Jesus took on human skin. Jesus became flesh not to rule over us, but to live with us, to love us, to touch us, to care about us, to walk through life's journey with us. God came to us at Christmas to show us that we are never really alone in this world. 
Jesus took on our flesh, lived our lives, rejoiced in our joys, cried our tears, and died our deaths. And perhaps the greatest thing we can do is see this Jesus in everyone that we meet. To incarnate his presence to those who need it most. And that, my friends, is the greatest Christmas gift we can give and receive. Merry Christmas, church. Amen.